ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ನೈನ್ ಆಫ್ ರಾಮಾಯಣಾಸ್ ಅರಣ್ಯಕಾಂಡ ಅಗಸ್ತ್ಯಾಸ್ ಆಶ್ರಮ ರಾಮಾಯ ರಾಮಭದ್ರಾಯ ರಾಮಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ವೇದಸೆ ರಘುನಾಥಾಯ ನಾಥಾಯ ಸೀತಾಯ ಪತಯೇ ನಮಃ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಣ ಎಂಟರ್ಡ್ ದಿ ಆಶ್ರಮ ಆಫ್ ಅಗಸ್ತ್ಯ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಸಾ ಅ ಡಿಸೈಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಋಷಿ ಹಿ ಸೆಟ್ ದೇರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಎನ್ ಎಂಪರರ್ ಬೈ ನೇಮ್ ದಶರಥ ಹಿ ಸನ್ Rama has come here with his wife Sita. He wants to take the dust of the feet of the great Agastya. I am Lakshmana, his younger brother. I am devoted to him and I serve him. You must be knowing all about my brother. Because of the commands of our father, we have entered this fierce forest, Dhandaka, and we have been spending our time visiting all the great and good men living here. We want to see the Rishi at his convenience the disciple agreed to announce the arrival of the princess and he entered the agnihotra shala this was where the sacred fire was placed and worshiped daily he stood before the rishi who was glowing with the radiance of his tapas and standing with his arms locked across his chest the disciple gave him the message of lakshmana Two sons of Dasharatha have come to visit your gracious self. The elder son has brought his wife with him. They await your convenience. Hearing about the coming of Rama, Agastya said, I am very pleased that Rama has come to see me. I was thinking of him and wishing him to come to me for some time now. Why did you not bring them at once? go and ask them to be with me welcome them with great honor and bring them to me the disciple went out in a flurry approached lakshmana and said our guru is impatient to meet rama his wife and you please enter and i will take you to him he went with lakshmana to where rama was waiting and after he had repeated the words of agastya to him he took all three of them to the presence of agastya rama and sita walked into the ashrama followed by lakshmana and they looked around them to see the many shrines which had been built for the different gods agastya himself had come forward to meet them and to receive rama rama was thrilled at the sight of the great man about whom he had heard so much he said look lakshmana the great agastya is coming towards us does he not seem as though nobility and tapas have taken a single form and that is agastya rama approached him and prostrated at his feet his heart was full of happiness since he had seen agastya all three of them stood humbly before him waiting for him to speak the rishi asked rama about his welfare and said take your seats and let us converse they sat and watched while he performed the homa to the fire he then made them take their food after they had partaken of the food agastya spoke to rama rama you are a great prince and you are the image of dharma so i have been told i am happy to have you as my guest and with your wife and your brother you are welcome to spend some time with me agastya was very happy to have rama with him he showed a magnificent bow to him and said this divine bow inlaid with gold and encrusted with gems has been designed by vishwakarma and it was vishnu's dhanus it is spoken of as brahmadatta since it was given to narayana by brahma I have with me two quivers which are inexhaustible and they were given to me by Indra. I have with me a sword with a silver scabbard. In ancient times Narayana used this bow to fight with the asuras during a war in the heavens. I am giving all these to you. Accept them and wear them as Indra does his vajra. Indra also gave me an armor which cannot be pierced. use that also i wish you well you will ever be victorious when the time comes when you need a chariot 
Mathali, the charioteer of Indra, will bring you the chariot of Indra and you will use it. But that is not now. That will be after some more time. You will know when. With great humility, Rama accepted the wonderful gifts from Agastya. The Rishi continued, Rama, even evening is drawing near. The sun has just set. Rest here, all of you happily. Look at the owls on the treetops. Birds and animals have quietly gone back to their nests and lairs. The sky is dark and unlit by the moon. Rama woke up early in the morning and waited for Agastya to complete his morning ablutions. He then went to him and Agastya welcomed him with a smile and asked him, Did you spend a comfortable night with your wife and your brother? Rama replied, We were honored, my lord. We felt that we were back in Ayodhya, in our father's mansion. So well and with so much affection were we taken care of. They seated themselves with the other rishis and disciples of Agastya and the great man said, Rama, the time which you have been asked to spend in the forest by your father Dasharatha is almost coming to an end. When your promise is kept, when the time is fully spent here, you will go, go back covered with glory. Fortunate indeed is your father to have a son like you who has undertaken such a strenuous task to save him from ignominy. Rama replied humbly, I have not been unhappy at all, my lord. I have actually enjoyed these few years wandering from ashrama to ashrama and being with the noble men of the forest. And now, your words full of affection make me feel that I am blessed. I am very fortunate since you think so kindly of me. As for my father, he has on his own won a place for himself in the heavens. It is not that I have saved him from adharma. He has performed so many yagnas and so many charitable deeds and the heavens have been earned by him. He was silent for a moment. Perhaps to his mind came the face of his father as he last saw him. Rama shed these sad thoughts away and said, I have a favor to ask of you, my lord. Can you suggest a place for me where I can dwell in peace and spend the rest of my exile? It should be convenient in every way and at the same time, it should not be too crowded with people. I am eager to find such a place and make a home there for a while till my return to Ayodhya. Jai Shri Ram. Shri Rama Rama Rame Ti Rame Rame Manorame Sahasranama Tatulyam Rama Nama Varanane Om Shri Rama Paramast Chapter 9 Part 2 of Ramayana's Aranyakanda Agastya's Ashrama Apad Mahartaram Dataram Sarvasampadam Lokaviramam Shiramam Bhuyo Bhuyo Namamyam Rama shed these sad thoughts away and said, I have a favor to ask of you, my lord. Can you suggest a place for me where I can dwell in peace and spend the rest of my exile? It should be convenient in every way and at the same time it should not be too crowded with people. I am eager to find such a place and make a home there for a while till my return to Ayodhya. Agastya said, Rama, I wonder if you know the story of this place called Dhandaka forest. In ancient days, Dhandaka, the brother of your ancestor Ikshwaku, had to abandon this place because of the curse of Bhargava. It then became uninhabited even by animals. Stretching 500 yojanas up to Vindhya mountains, this place became a dreadful forest filled with wild trees and wild creepers. No rishi had the courage to build an ashrama here. The clouds would not gather and shed rain and the wind would not blow here. 
It was a place wholly occupied by Rakshasas, Gandharvas and Rishis did not think of using this place and for many long years it was without any habitation. After some time from the heights of the Himavan, which was my dwelling place, I came here by chance. With me came the rains and suddenly there was copious rain here. Diseases, which are the messengers of Yama, were here in abundance and with the power of my tapas, I destroyed them. I made the trees from Himavan to grow in this place. The rivers were filled again and lotuses bloomed on their faces. Ponds were formed and lakes. Seeing the country changed in appearance, the rishis came here to build their ashramas. The place became prosperous with trees which yielded fruits. But then, in spite of all this, because of the curse of Bhargava, the place is still frightful. Rakshasas have made their home here. Ever since you came to Chitrakuta, the Rakshasas have begun to harass the rishis here more often than they used to. Rama, you are a valiant Kshatriya and it is up to you to grant them succor. Evidently, fate has decreed that you should come down to Dandaka for this sole purpose, to destroy these Rakshasas and save us, poor hermits. You are capable of protecting the three worlds. It is not going to be hard for you to perform this small task for us. Ikshwaku's kinsman Dandaka had to abandon this place, as I told you, because of the curse of a rishi. But as a result of your coming and since your eyes have lighted on it, Dandaka is now freed from the curse under which it was laboring all these many years. Make no delay in destroying the Rakshasas. Rama was fascinated by the narration of Agastya. He said as much to the Rishi, who continued to talk. Agastya said, I am gratified to know that both of you with Sita came here to see me and to take my blessings. Perhaps you are both tired after the long trek you had yesterday. I am certain this delicate princess Sita will be extremely fatigued. She is very tender and she has not known what discomfort is till now. Because of her devotion to you, she has walked all this distance, beset as it is with so many hardships. Rama, remember she has done something which is not easy. She has accompanied you to Dandaka. You should try to keep her happy always. Women generally shower love on their husbands when fortune favours them. And when the men are poor, are robbed of their wealth, or when misfortune visits them, then women will shrink away from them and abandon them even. This has been the habit of ordinary illiterate women. Again, the poets compare the mind of a woman, her fickleness, to lightning. The sharpness of a sword's edge is used as an example for their cruel words, and the eagle and the wind are the examples for the swiftness of their actions. But this, your wife, is innocent of all these faults. She is like Arundhati among the divine women. She is a Pativrata. The place where you are going to dwell with Lakshmana and Sita will indeed be a holy spot. Sita was feeling embarrassed by his praises of her and Rama spoke very humbly. It is your gracious it is gracious of you to look on us with so much affection. I am honoured by you. If you will indicate to me a place where I can spend the remaining years of my exile, I will be immensely grateful. There should be a river by the side of my ashrama and there should be trees and flowering shrubs so that Sita can be happy there. Agastya thought for a while and then said, Rama, child, about two yojanas from here is a place which is known as Panchavati. There are fruits and roots in plenty for you there. Water can be found very near to the place and there are deer which will please Sita. You can build an ashrama there and spend your time happily without any worry till the time comes when you can go back to your Ayodhya. 
I know all about the happenings in Ayodhya. With the power of my tapas, I have been able to know the past, the present and the future. It is this knowledge of the future which is prompting me to ask you to go to Panchavati. This is in spite of my desire to ask you to spend all your time here with me. Great events are awaiting to be born and it is essential that you should go and stay in Panchavati. The place I have suggested is beautiful and very pleasing. The river Godavari flows by the side of this Panchavati and you will find peace there. It is a lonely place and not many people frequent it. But it is not very far from here. I suggest you remain there and protect the Tapaswin. Rama, look on this kopais full of Madhuka trees. When you pass through it, you will reach a new Grodha tree. From there, you can ascend that slope and ascend to a raised land if you go northwards. When you ascend that land, you will find near the mountain the famed place by name Panchavati. It is the ideal spot for building an ashrama. Rama stood up and with him Lakshmana and Sita. They took from him the great bow, the armor, the sword and the quivers which were inexhaustible and made Pradakshina to the divine weapons which had been graciously given to them by the great man. They prostrated before him and sought his permission to leave. After prostrating before him and taking the dust of his feet, they travelled in the direction which he had indicated and their destination was Panchavati. Jai Shri Ram Shri Rama Rama Rame Tirame Rame Manorame Sahasranama Tatulyam Rama Nama Varanane Om Shri Rama Pranamast Chapter 10 of Ramayana's Aranyakanda Panchavati Apada Mahataram Dataram Sarvasampadam Loka Viram Shri Ramam Bhuyo Bhuyo Namami while they were walking towards Panchavati, Rama saw on the way an immense eagle which was perched on the very Nyogrodha tree which Agastya had mentioned. The brothers were almost sure that it was a Rakshasa who had assumed this form and was waiting for them. Rama asked the bird, Who are you? The bird was greatly excited at the sight of the princess. He said, Children, I am a great friend of your father. When Rama heard that he was his father's friend, he was extremely happy. He wanted to know more about him and about how the friendship between the two had begun. The bird told them about himself. This was his story. Kashyapa Prajapati had several daughters, one of whom was known as Shaini. You must have heard of Vinata who has two sons. One is Aruna, the charioteer of the sun, and the other is Garuda, the vehicle of Narayana himself. Aruna married Shaini and he had two sons, both eagles taking after their mother. I am the younger of the two and my elder brother is Sampati. My name is Jatayu. This forest is very fierce and dangerous. If you so desire, I will live with you and be your companion. When you have to go out with Lakshmana, I will be with Sita and guard her. Rama embraced Jatayu with his affection since he was his father's friend and thanked him for his offer which he accepted gratefully. The four of them travelled towards Panchavati. Guided by Jatayu, they reached it very soon. And Rama thought to himself, It is fortunate that we have found a friend in Jatayu. I can leave Sita in safe hands and destroy the Rakshasas like fire burns up moths. They had arrived at Panchavati. Rama looked around and said, Lakshmana, this is the place which was indicated by the sage Agastya. Look at those trees laden with flowers and the river which is so near. This must be Panchavati. 
Look around, Lakshmana. You know only too well the kind of place I would like. Look for a place where there is enough water for us to perform our daily worship of the gods. Sita should be happy and we should have peace. Trees should be around and Samhit, Dharba grass and flowers should be within reach. Build for us an ashrama in such a place. Lakshmana said, I am but your servant, Rama. I will build the ashrama by the choice of the location should be yours. I will not presume to know where it should be. Rama smiled at the words of Lakshmana and together they looked around for a suitable site. After some rambling around, they found the ideal place. Rama took Lakshmana's hand in his and said, Look, this place seems to me to be the best suited for our purpose. The ground is level and it is surrounded by trees in abundance. Build an ashrama here for us. Close by is a small stream and the perfume of lotuses floating on its surface reaches us here. And just across, some distance from here, is the river Godhavari which the Rishi told us about. There are mountains and the herds of deer are roaming on the slopes. Peacocks are dancing everywhere and the mountains have several minerals that glow red, white and yellow. The green of the trees together with these colors present the appearance of a painted picture. The elephants stand out against this colorful background as though they are etched in space. I like this picturesque Panchavati. Let us live here. Lakshmana built an ashrama there on the site indicated by Rama. He brought lotuses from the river Godavari after bathing in it. He made an offering of the flowers to the gods that guarded the forest and spoke words prescribed for averting evil. He went to Rama and Sita. He told them that the ashrama was ready for them. Rama saw how well prepared. Rama saw how well planned it was and how sturdily built. He was enchanted with it. He embraced him warmly and said, Lakshmana, I am very pleased with you. You have done me a very good service and the only way I can thank you for it is to embrace you. You are wise, you are righteous and even without being told about it, you know what my wishes are. My father, I think, is not dead but is here before me in the form of my brother. Rama was shedding tears of joy and Lakshmana stood with an embarrassed smile on his face. They lived happily in that ashrama for a long while without any disturbance, without any worry. Sita enjoyed herself collecting flowers and stringing them, making friends with the birds, the deer and the peacocks. Rama was like Indra in his Amaravati. He was happy. Once during the season, Hemanta, when the waters were chilly and the river was bitter cold in the morning, they had entered the river Godavari. Lakshmana at once thought of Bharata and said, Bharata will also be bathing in the cold waters of Sarayu now. He is performing tapas because of his devotion to you, my brother. He has now abandoned all the comforts of a palace, the power which was given to him to rule the kingdom and like a tapaswin, he wears coarse cloth and sleeps on the floor. He must have risen before sunrise and proceeded to the river Sarayu even as we are doing now. I do not know how he is able to bear the cold. What a noble brother you have, Rama. Dark like you, he is so handsome and he will never act in a manner distasteful to anyone. Always smiling when he talks, he has been very dear to all. He has won for himself the heavens because of his devotion to you. Rama, they say that generally men inherit the qualities of the mother and not the father. In the case of Bharata, our dear brother, the saying has been falsified. I still cannot understand how Kaike, the queen of such a noble king and the mother of noble Bharata, could have been so evil-minded. Rama was listening to his words and said, Child, my dear Lakshmana, do not talk ill of our mother. Keep on talking of Bharata. It is pleasing to my ears. When you speak his name, 
my mind has become sad and greatly distressed thinking of my beloved brother i have also thought often of him and his pleasing ways i cannot forget the tragic manner in which we parted when in chitrakuta i refused to go back with him to ayodhya he was so disappointed and his tear stained face when he finally had to accept my words as final is ever before my eyes and i cannot sleep at times thinking of him i see him walking with the padukas placed on his head and his eyes streaming with unheeded tears bharata my beloved bharata how much he loves me i wonder when we will all be reunited when will i go back to our beloved ayodhya and when will four of us be together again happy as we once were they spent their time in talking about old days about their mothers their dear departed father and so time passed them by unheeded they spent very happy and peaceful days at panchavati jai shri ram shri ram 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 eti ram e ram e manorm e sahasranama tatulyam ram nama varanane om shri ram ar panamast chapter 11 of ramayana's aranyakanda shurpanaka आपाद महर्ता दाता लोकाभिराम श्रीराम भूय भूयो नमाम्यहम राम स्पेंट मेनी हैप्पी डेज इन दी आश्रम एट पंचवटी दे वुड बेथ डेली इन द रिवर गोदावरी वर्शिप द सन एंड रिसाइट वर्सेस इन प्रेज ऑफ द गॉड्स हुम दे वर्शिप्ड रामा वुड वॉक बैक टू द आश्रम विद सीता एंड लक्ष्मण आ वुड फॉलो विद पॉट फिल्ड विद वाटर फ्रॉम द रिवर एंड सो दे स्पेंड देर टाइम adhering to a routine and wandering in the nearby forest and they were happy rama with sita by his side would look like the moon with his favorite star chitra by his side once when they were seated thus sita by the side of rama and lakshmana some distance away a rakshasi shurpanaka by name came there by chance shurpanaka was the sister of the famed ravana She stopped in her tracks and looked again and again at Rama. She saw his side chest, his long arms, his eyes, long and beautiful like the petals of a lotus, and his face glowing with a beauty which was not earthly, and she stood rooted to the spot. She had not seen so much beauty. This man was wearing his hair in a tangled mass as though he were a rishi and yet he looked like a king. He was dark like a blue lotus. and his looks his handsomeness was that of manmatha the god of love shurpanaka realized that she was in love with him and wanted him for her lord this ugly woman wanted the handsome man she was enormous and her eyes had lighted on this slim and lissome lis- figure her eyes were red and cruel and his eyes were soft and gentle she was red hair and his hair was dark and soft in spite of the matting one could not bear the sight of her since she was so fearful and as for him the eyes which had lighted on him once refused to look at other things her voice was like thunder and his was pleasing to the ear she was old and he was young she was crooked in her thinking and he was straight surpanaka could not resist the charm which was rama and she went to him she asked him you seem to be a stranger in these places you are wearing tree bark and deer skin and your hair is matted like that of a rishi but your arms belie your appearance a bow arrows and a sword are not used by rishis this is the dwelling place of rakshasas how did you come here tell me the truth rama said There was a famous king by name Dasharatha. I am his eldest son and they call me Rama. The young man standing there is my brother Engar and his name is Lakshman. This is Sita my wife and she is the daughter of Janaka the king of Videha. Because I was committed by my father I have come to live in this forest. I would like to know who you are. To whom do you belong? 
Let us know about you. Looking at you and your appearance, it seems to me you are a Rakshasi. Tell me truly, why have you come here? Shurpanaka, afflicted with love for this godly man, said, Rama, I will tell you all about myself. I am called Shurpanaka. I am a Rakshasi and I can assume any form I desire. I move about in this forest, frightening everyone who lives here. You might have heard of the powerful and famous Rakshasa king by name Ravana. I am his sister. He is the son of Vishavas. Ravana has a brother by name Kumbhakarna and this brother of mine is afflicted with a dreadful inclination to sleep all the time. He is very brave and a very great fighter, but he loves sleep. I have another brother. He is Vibhishana. He is alien to the qualities of Rakshasas. He is very righteous in his thinking and in his acts too. Kara and Dushana, the famed fighters, are also my brothers. They live here. Be that as it may, I came here by chance and I saw you. Ever since I saw you, my mind has no other desire but one, to be your wife. I have chosen you as my lord. I am very powerful and I can go where I please. Be my husband. What can this Sita do? She is not fit to be the wife of a man like you. I am the perfect mate for you. She is ugly and ill-formed. Look at her. She is fit only to be my food. I will eat her up and your brother too. Then, free of them, you can live with me happily in this Dhandaka forest. Laughing loudly, she stood with her hands on her immense waist, looking at all three of them. Rama would not take her words seriously. He said he decided to make a sport of it and get rid of her easily. He smiled slightly and said, I am a married man. I also happen to love this woman who is my wife. For one like you, it will not be easy to be the second wife to a man. Sharing a husband with another woman will not be possible for the likes of you. This Lakshmana, who is my younger brother, is handsome and he is valiant like me. He is not married and he is the ideal mate for you. Accept him as your husband and you will have him all for yourself. Shurpanaka, obsessed as she was with lust, thought that he spoke the truth and she went to Lakshmana. She said, I am good looking enough to be your wife. You are very handsome and so am I. Marry me and we will be happy here in the Dhandaka forest. Lakshmana decided to play up to Rama's joke. He smiled too and said, I am the servant of this Rama. How will it be possible for you to be the wife of a servant? I have no independence. I am but his vassal. Able as you are to assume any form you please, you should press your love suit more vehemently and be the second wife of my brother. He will be so charmed by your looks that he will give up this ugly, ill-looking wife of his and live with you. Which sensible man will let go of this chance to marry a beautiful woman like you and be attached to a human being. Jai Shri Ram. Shri Rama Rama Rame Ti Rame Rame Mano Rame Sahasranama Tatulyam Rama Nama Varanane Om Shri Rama Pranamast. Chapter 11 of Ramayana's Aranyakanda Part 2 Shurpanaka आपाद महर्तारम दातारम सर्वसंपदाम लोकाविरामम श्रीरामम भूयो भूयो नमाम्यहम शूरपणक could not perceive that the brothers were making fun of her she went near rama and said because you have this woman by your side you refuse to look at me i will this very moment eat her up even as you are looking and then i will have you as my husband her eyes were red like embers and she rushed towards Sita whose eyes were white with fear. Rama could not bear to see Sita frightened of the dreadful Rakshasi. He held her back and said, Child, Lakshmana, I realize that it is tongue to sport with wicked people. 
taking care that Sita is not harmed. Take care that Sita is not harmed. This Rakshasi has got to be punished. Miyam her and send her away. Lakshmana promptly took his sword and he snipped off the tips of the nose and ears of Shurpanaka. Screaming with pain, Shurpanaka ran into the forest. To them, her screams sounded like the rumblings of the rain clouds. She reached Janasthana soon. Janasthana, which was the place where the Rakshasas lived. She fell at the feet of her brother Kara, and her fall made a sound like thunder. Kara saw her drenched in blood and he saw that she was in great pain. He did not know what had happened. He was furious with the persons who had hurt her and he asked her, Rouse yourself, my dear sister. Tell me what happened. Who has to be punished for this outrage? It seems to me this person is as foolish as a man who teases with his fingertips a poisonous cobra which is sleeping. He has taken the noose of death and has placed it on his neck, thinking it is a garland of flowers. He has not been wise. He has neared his end, evidently, or else he would not have done this to you. How did this happen? Does he not know what it is to antagonize me and my clan? Even Indra is powerless in my presence. I will this very moment drink his life with my arrows. I will spill his blood on this thirsty earth. The eagles and the hawks will have fresh food to eat today. Tell me which Gandharva, Deva, Dhanava had the foolishness to lay hands on you. Shurpanaka was very unhappy. Her tears were flowing freely and her love for Rama had turned to hatred and a desire for revenge. But her words betrayed her real feelings. She said, My dear brother, how is it you have not heard about the newcomers to Dandaka? I saw them today. There are two of them. They are young, handsome and strong too. They seem to have been accustomed to luxury and their limbs are tender. They are extremely powerful though. Their eyes are long and more beautiful than the petals of a lotus. They are dressed like ascetics. They seem to be extremely righteous and they live like hermits. But they are princes. They are the sons of a king named Dasharatha and they are called Rama and Lakshmana. As archers, they seem to be unequaled in the world and they seem as though they are very good, kind and compassionate. Their beauty is like that of Gandharvas. All the glory of the Kshatriyas seems to have a hate, seems to have found a home in these two brothers. It is difficult to believe that they are human beings. So divine is their presence and appearance. By their side was a young woman. She was very beautiful. Unlike them, she seemed to have decked herself in ornaments of gold and she was dressed in fine silks. Because of this woman, these two men who seemed to be righteous hurt me and meand me thus. I wish to see them dead in battle and I wish to drink their blood. If you cannot help me to have my revenge, I will myself go and fight with them. Kara was naturally angry with these strangers to Dhandaka, who had the audacity to touch her sister. He called for fourteen of his men and instructed them, Go into the forest Dhandaka. There are, I am told, two men dressed in tree bark and deer skin like ascetics. They have a woman with them and they are dwelling in the Dandaka forest. They are armed with bows and arrows which belie their garb. Go immediately to their ashrama, kill all three of them and come back. My sister wishes to drink their blood. They bowed in acquiescence and Shurpanaka led them to the ashrama of Rama. They appeared like rain-bearing clouds driven by the wind. They were there led by Shurpanaka. They saw Rama and Sita and with them was Lakshmana. Rama saw them and said, It looks like we have to do some fighting. Lakshmana, take care of Sita for a moment. I will kill these who have come with that women. Rama took up his bow and arrows and asked them, 
we are two princes from Ayodhya and we are living the lives of ascetics and we have not harmed anyone. Why do you come here and try to fight with us? I have been told that you bother all the rishis here with your cruelties. I have taken up my bow and arrows to punish the likes of you. If you have coverage enough, stay and fight with me. If however you want to leave, then leave this spot at once and run as fast as you can. Jai Shri Ram Shri Rama Rama Rame Tirame Rame Manurame Sahasranama Tatpilyam Rama Nama Varanane Om Shri Rama Panamast Chapter 12 of Ramayana's Aranyakanda Kara Dushana and Trishyaras Apada Mahartaram Dataram Sarvasampadam Lokavi Ramam Shri Ramam Bhuyo Bhuyo Namamya. The servants of Kara could not brook the insulting manner of speech adopted by Rama. They did not realize that he really meant well when he said that he would spare their lives. They taunted him with their bravery and suiting the action to the word, they flung their tridents at Rama. Rama broke all of them and he sent the arrows by name Narachas and each one of them was killed by his arrows. It was like a game for Rama and he saw all 14 of them dead and on the ground. Shurpanaka was amazed at the prowess of Rama and at the same time frightened. She ran back to Kara and stood silent in front of him. She could not speak and Kara became impatient with her silence. He said, I have done what you wanted me to do. I have sent my men to kill the men who insulted you. What more is expected of me? Why do you still stand before me with tears in your eyes and with a woe begone face? She said, My dear brother, I know you always try to please me and to avenge my disfigurement. You sent your men to kill the human beings. But Rama has killed all of them. They are lying there in a large pool of blood. I am frightened. You should see to it that these men are destroyed. You should kill them or else I will kill them myself. From the manner in which you seem to hesitate, it seems to me you are afraid to encounter him. You realize, perhaps, that you are quite powerless in the presence of Rama. You are a disgrace to our house. If you have any pride or valor in you, go at once and fight with this Rama and kill him. Or else, abandon this Janastana with all your king's folk. You are of no use to anyone by staying here, afraid as you are of just two ordinary human beings. Kara was mad with anger at the insults which she was hurling at him. He said, Stop talking like this. My anger is trying to burst its bounds like a sea in stormy weather. Who says I am scared of Rama? How dare you insult me like this? I will this very moment go and dispatch the two of them to Yama's land. Shurpanaka was glad to see that he was going to fight with Rama. She began to praise him and Kara called his commander Dushana and said, Collect our army, let the 14,000 warriors who are extremely powerful, brave and fearless, get ready to fight with this unknown man who seems to have killed 14 of our best men. Hasten to collect the weapons and bring me my chariot yoked with the best horses. I have always decided to fight with this small man and kill him today. Kara's chariot had arrived. It was beautifully made. Covered with gold and set with gems, the chariot gleamed like the sun. The inlay work was wonderful and it was a work of art. Fully equipped with all the weapons needed for fighting. Kara entered the chariot and he was surrounded by the entire army. And Dushana was with him. The army set out its march. 14,000 of the Rakshasas led by Kara to kill two human beings. 
out of janasthana streamed out the immense army and the noise rose to the skies led by the footmen of the army advanced fast and in the midst of that sea of warriors gleamed the chariot of kara like the sun in the midst of rain clouds filled with hailstones everywhere evil omens could be seen suddenly there appeared a crimson cloud in the sky and there rained a ghastly rain of blood on the army while they were in the royal path the horse tripped and fell down there was a circle of black round the rim of the sun and on the pillar which carried the banner sat an eagle several other omens all indicating some great calamity were seen by all of them but kara paid no heed to them i am not affected by these manifestations of nature he said it is only weak and cowardly men who will attach any importance to such things i have no fear with my arrows i can fell the stars from the sky i will make even death enter his own city unless and until i kill that arrogant rama and his brother i will not return to my city it is well known that there has not been any man so far who has been able to meet me in fight indra riding on his airavata cannot face me what then should be the fate of these mere men the army was infused with enthusiasm by the words of the master and they did not heed the omens any longer rishis devas siddhas and charanas with the gandharvas filled the sky to watch the encounter they spoke among themselves narayana has taken upon himself the task of ridding the world of these sinners and we are fortunate to witness the killings of this huge army by rama let us wish him to be victorious and let us pray that the same fate will be met by the grandson of pullastya rama has been born for the sole purpose of killing ravana and this fight is but the forerunner of the great achievement of his in the near future 12 of his chief fighters surrounded kara four more mahakapala stulaksha pramati and trisharas brought up the rear of the army dushana was at the forefront like evil planets hurrying towards the sun and moon to harass them these rakshasas rushed towards rama and lakshmana rama in the meantime was in his ashrama and he too saw the evil omens which spelt misfortune to the rakshasas he told lakshmana look on these omens it is a sure indication that the rakshasas will all be destroyed as for my bow it seems to throb as though impatient to be used my arrows are already fuming and i can almost see the smoke coming from them from what the shastras say these evil omens indicate that the rakshasas will all be destroyed a dreadful war is in the offing a number of lives will be lost my right hand is throbbing and that means that i will be the victor i can hear the noise made by the army which is approaching us evidently that woman has not been idle it has been said by the wise that a man who desires to be victorious should anticipate danger and be ready to face it he should make all the preparations beforehand take your bow and arrow lakshmana and with sita go to a cave whose entrance is hidden by the trees and which is not easily accessible to anyone i know that i am denying you the pleasure of using your arms but the safety of sita is just essential that sinful sister of ramana may cause her harm when we are both engaged in fighting you will have to obey me i am afraid i know that you unassisted will be able to destroy this army of rakshasas but i want to do it myself since it is a promise to the rishis you must guard sita very carefully Lakshmana took up his bow and arrows and as Rama had instructed him he led Sita to a safe cave Rama waited to see them enter the cave and sighed with relief 
he put on his armor and he strung his bow strapped his quiver to his shoulder and stood there looking as glorious as fire which burns without smoke the rishis in the forest thought that lord mahadeva was there before them with his famed pinaka in his hand the anger on the brow of rama was like the third eye of the lord jai shri ram रामाय राम भद्राय रामचंद्राय वेदसे रघुनाथाय नाथाय सीताय पतये नम ओं श्रीरामापणमस्तु